Hello, I'm Graham Steele, CEO and founder of CryptoSense, and today I'm going to talk about FIPS 140 3 approved algorithms. What are they? So, FIPS 140 Revision 3 is the third version of the Federal Information Processing Standard for cryptographic modules. So, this is the standard that governs what is a secure cryptographic implementation, whether it's a piece of hardware or maybe a software library, that can be approved for a product that's going to protect sensitive information, for example, for supplying to the US government. But in fact, the FIPS 140 standards are used as de facto standards for good cryptographic security all over the world in the private sector as well. So FIPS 140-3 was designed to bring the FIPS 140 standard in line with an ISO standard, which is 19790 from 2012, but the FIPS standard overrides a part of the ISO standard, the part about which algorithms can be approved. So it overrides Annex C of the, of the ISO standard with a document called uh, SB800-140C, which itself doesn't define the algorithms. It, in fact, gives a list of references to existing NIST publications about algorithms and key lengths and transitions and so on, which you then have to go through to figure out whether the algorithms that your product is using are, are approved, whether they're likely to be implemented by a FIPS-approved module and whether you're going to pass whatever certification, whether it's FedRAMP or whatever it is that you, that you need to go through. So. We've got a link in the comments to an article on our blog where we do that work for you, we actually go through those references and show you what's approved and what's not approved, but a few headline facts about FIPS 140-3 algorithms that might uh, be of interest. First of all, in block ciphers, well, AES, so AES is the standard cipher, and of course that's what uh, the FIPS standard suggests that you use. You are allowed, just in the short term, to continue using triple DES. You can use triple DES as long as you use sort of the three key version, as long as you encrypt only up to two to the 20 blocks before you change key, uh, and you're only allowed to do it until 2023. After 2023, that won't be allowed anymore for encryption. You can still decrypt old data, but you can't do encryption anymore. So if you want to know why that is about the insecurity of triple DES, we have a separate uh, video on that. Uh, but anyway, that's the story now. So you've got until 2023 to get that triple DES out of there, and you need to make sure that you're only encrypting small amounts of data before you change uh, key. Then there are some specifications on key length. So for example, for making signatures, you need to be using at least RSA uh, 2048, so 2048 bits uh, key lengths for RSA signatures. Mostly this is good practice uh, and, and everyone's doing this anyway, but in a, a large product or a large network, you can still have lurking around some RSA 1024 uh, certificates. So you, you wanna make sure you, you've got rid of those. Uh, of course, you can't use uh, the SHA-1 hash function anymore, except in very specific circumstances where it's approved for very specific algorithms and certain legacy uh, conditions. Uh, and if you're using HMAC, for example, to generate a signature, you need to have 112 bits uh, key length uh, minimum. So that gives you an idea of what's in the FIPS 143 approved algorithms list. Uh, so here at CryptoSense, we have an amazing suite of tools for going around your network, your file systems, your applications, your application code, looking for where you use cryptography, and we can show you what's compliant and what isn't and what key lengths you're, you're actually using and what's really implementing those. So if you want to find out about that, go ahead and get in touch, uh, use the comments. Otherwise, don't forget to go ahead and subscribe to keep up to date with cryptographic news here uh, at CryptoSense, and I'll see you again soon here on the channel. Thank mm -hmm. you.